no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and as a reminder, every single one of these Raiders mailbags is filmed on our live show Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. First question is coming in from Raina Haina. Thoughts on bringing back Jeff Heath? All right, I actually really, really like this question here. So Heath was uh, a pretty solid player last season for the Raiders. Last offseason signed a two-year, $8 million contract. This offseason they decided to move on from him and save $3 million. Now, if you were to tell me right now, would I be interested in bringing him back on a vet minimum deal, one year, $1.05 million? Hell yeah, I'd be interested in that. He was a good player. He's not only a good special teams player, he's also a leader on this team, and he led the team in interceptions. Like, if you were to ask me who was probably the best safety on the team last year, I would have said Jeff Heath. So if Heath is open to the idea of coming back to this team, then so am I. But what do you all think here? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Should the Raiders sign Jeff Heath? He is still out there on the free agent market. I'm not paying him anything more than $1.05 million if he wants more than that. I'm okay with some of the other safeties we have on this roster. But if you're telling me right now Daniel Levitt or Jeff Heath in terms of you want somebody who can play safety and be a special teams player, I'll take Jeff Heath every single day of the week. Even though I like Levitt, he's a good player, but Heath is better. Let's be real. Let's go to Khalid Martinez. What do you think the cap will look like for next season? Possibly sign Devontae Adams via free agency. So all I know is that the Raiders cap is, or NFL cap is going to go up. I believe the number is $208.2 million, which is $38 million more than basically what it is right now. It's still very hard to be able to wrap my mind around some of the moves that this team could potentially make. But if they want Devontae Adams, you can go ahead and do it. But you're going to pay Adams about $22, $23 million per year and probably give him a five-year deal. So, something to think about. Let's go to Juicehead89. Raiders, what's up, Mitch? Which, de which defense would you think is better or prefer 2016 or 2021? Well, I've already seen the 2016 defense, and it really wasn't all that great. So, I guess I'm going to go ahead and say 2021 because that at least has a chance to be a top 15 D. Go to Super Chat. It says, Quinn, appreciate you, my man. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, let's go to the next Super Chat coming in from Papaya Man 89 Stuck at work till 6.30 p.m., and you get me through it, Mitch. Appreciate you, brother. Papaya Man, appreciate you. If you haven't already and you're a Raiders fan, go ahead and subscribe. All right, we got another Super coming in for from I Kneel for One. Mitch, 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 try putting together a motel in Raiders versus Cowboys Thanksgiving game package so we can all show up strong with the Mitch. What you think? If anybody's in Dallas, if anybody wants to get get together for the Raiders Cowboys game, hit me up. I know I'm going to be going to a few uh, few parties around around the Dallas area. So if you need some information on some cool parties to go to, I got you. Message me Instagram MitchellRen365. Now I do want to say a special thanks to everyone who is already subbed. I know often I'm like, hey, hit that big red button. Hey, watch the show, this or that. And I don't really think far too often I say how much I appreciate the awesome audience that we've been able to build. And, I mean, I remember the day that I dyed my hair gray for hitting 10,000 subs. I remember, you know, doing Edwards 40 hands for 30K subscribers. I, I mean, I remember so many people being along the stretch, and it's been a bumpy, bumpy road here at Chat Sports. We've had some ups, we've had some downs, but we have one of the coolest audiences on all of YouTube. doesn't matter which team it is. But I do want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed. And if you haven't subbed yet, please go ahead and hit that big red button. Or you can take that link that you see below, youtube.com slash Raidersport, plug that in, and then just hit that subscribe button. Whoo, boy, chilly man. Mitch, tired of people saying we need trades, etc. We need to rock with what we got. Carr needs to live up to 120 mil contract, and the rest need to take it to the next level. So you're saying the car needs to live up to his five-year, $125 million contract, which... I actually think he's done a pretty good job, and it's one of the, also the reasons why I'm like, I'm not extending him because Carr's good. He's not a top 10 quarterback, but if you can keep him on the amount of money that he's making, I agree with you, but I also agree with you. It's about damn time that some of these players, that the Raiders go out and get in a free agency, that some of these draft picks stop blaming everybody else, stop blaming, all, and just simply play football. I know Cleveland Farrell had a quote the other day. It was like, you know, you can't judge me if you've never played. Essentially, it was like, you know, you, you can't, I forget what exactly the quote was, but you can't, you can't judge my driving if you don't know how to drive or something like that is what he said. I disagree with that. I thought Tom Downey had a great line was like, 
I don't need to be a professional chef to know good cooking. So I'm with you. The guys need to finally start to step up. Let's go to Daniel Rodriguez. What up, my man? I haven't seen Josh Jacobs at OTAs. Should we be concerned or no? I understand it's voluntary, but still should be there for your team. So, like, there's actually been a few players that I haven't seen there. Yes, Josh is one of those dudes. I'm not worried about it. It's voluntary workout, so you don't actually have to show. But there has been some players that aren't actually on the field but are in the facility. I haven't been able to confirm whether Josh has been one of those players, but I'm really not too worried. He's entering year three. We know he's a good running back. You know Kenyon Drake's there as well. Like, I know a lot of people have been ripping on Josh. He's a good running back. He's going to get some work here and there, but am I really worried about him? No, honestly, I'm not. What up, Mad Vet Woodworking? Let's say that UDFA uh, Darius Stills makes the 53. Who's out? If you're telling me he's in, I believe then they're going to keep five DTs, which means somebody like Darius Phylon, he's probably out of there. And I don't – yeah, it's probably just Phylon and then Niall Scott. Those are your other two DTs on the roster right now. Kool-Aid man, oh yeah, since you wanted Julio so bad, should we sign Alshon Jeffrey? He's basically the same thing. Wow, Julio Jones and Alshon Jeffrey, the same thing. That's, that's wild to me. All right, so in terms of Alshon Jeffrey, I'm just going to tell you all right now, I, he sucks Like at this point of his career. If you want to talk about a player who's soft, the nickname that I've given him over the last five years is Kleenex because if you're looking for somebody soft on your team, it's Alshon Jeffrey. I understand that I wanted Julio Jones, but in no way, shape, or form is Alshon anything close to Julio. I mean, look at these numbers the past three seasons, y'all. It's, it's not even close. Julio Jones dwarfs Alshon Jeffrey's numbers, and we always said, oh, Julio is injury prone. He's not injury prone. Alshon Jeffrey's injury prone. So do I want to go out and add a top receiver? Sure. Do I want to add somebody like Alshon Jeffrey? No, he's not a top receiver at this point anymore. And I think you really have to go back. It's like five years until he's had 1,000 yards. I get it. He's a big-name player. But I am going to sit here, and I am going to spam two until I am blue in the face. I do not want Alshon Jeffrey. Super chat from my man, Can't Walk. Also, I saw your uh, question on the Hi-Ho app, so I appreciate you. We got predict the starting defense week one. So if I got to pick the 11 starters here, it's going to be Yannick. It's going to be Cleland Furl, Max Crosby. Throw out Solomon Thomas there. Then your linebacker is going to be Corey Littleton. Nicholas Morrow, Nick Wachowski, that's seven players. Then your defense is going to be Abram, Merrig, and then Hayward and Trayvon Mullen. There's your starting 11. All right, what up, Ricky? Mitch, why do you think the Raiders are so disrespected that's left out in the NFL? Um, in terms of being disrespected, I actually don't really think that they're super disrespected. I just think that for whatever reason, Raider Nation just takes big-time offense to a lot of things. I saw the thing from uh, Bill Barnwell in the worst offseason. I've already given my two cents on that. It's on my Raiders Rumors video from Tuesday, so please go check it out. In terms of being left out in the NFL, I mean, I don't see how they are. They have a lot of primetime games. Five out of the six most expensive games this year are, in fact, Raiders games. Like, there's going to be a lot more excitement. There's going to be a lot of people being interested in the Raiders because of Las Vegas. So I don't know if disrespect or the left out's the right terminology. All right, we got Jen Mendoza. Think we are all set on the offensive line, or still do we need to tweak it? Do I think that the Raiders could add talent on the O-line? Yes, I do. Do I think they're going to do it? No, I do not think so. They're going to try to see what they have in Richie Incognito, and if he's not able to go, you could see John Simpson potentially go in there. They like what they have in Andre James. If he can't go, you see Nick Martin. Hell, Nick Martin might even be able to kick out the guard. But this is going to be a year where the Raiders hope that their young offensive line can flourish, that they hope that they can get a little bit better because that's what's really going to help this team, at least going forward. Now, I've partnered with the Newsbreak app, and I want every single person that comes across this video, if you value our friendship, you will go to chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. Once you go to chatsports.com slash RaidersNB, I want you to search Raiders Report and then follow the Raiders Report on the free app. Yes, it's a 100% free app. If you're wondering why the heck would I do that, 
exclusive Raiders Report content. I mean, that's pretty awesome to me. And more sports videos, right? Plus, if you need what's going on in your local news, the weather, politics, food, pop culture, we got all of that awesome stuff. So if you're watching this live right now, just click the link, chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. It's also going to be in the description. It's going to be in the comments. So if you're on your iPhone right now, go ahead, type in chatsports.com slash RaidersNB and download the Newsbreak app because it offers a lot of awesome, awesome things. And plus, I set goals before shows, right? Where I'm like, all right, I want to hit certain goals. I want to hit certain benchmarks. I want to get to 1,000 followers on the Raiders report on the Newsbreak app, okay? So 1,000 followers over there. I need 270 more to do that. So far, the only channel here at Chat Sports that has 1,000 followers on the Newsbreak app is the Cowboys report. Let's change that. Go ahead, chatsports.com slash RaidersNB. Please, guys, it helps me out a lot. It tells my shows, my sponsors, that I'm doing the right things. So if you respect me, seriously, help out the show. Chatsports.com, RaidersNB. Let's go to JT, the pipe layer. Wow, that's you're not hiding anything there. Uh, let's tank and get a new quarterback. Carr is always hurt. I don't see how you could say he's always hurt. I mean, I get the fact that he hurt his groin last year, but to say that he's always hurt is kind of ridiculous to me. So, And then if you're going to tank for a new quarterback, who do you want? Because that's really important. And if you are going to tank, you better finish in the top. You better finish the bottom five. That's the only way you're going to get the quarterback that you want. Let's go to Anna Acosta. How good will our defense do? On paper, I actually believe this is a top 15 defense. That's how good it is. And if they can get what needs to be done with Gus Bradley, it can be a solid D. The issue is, until I see it, I can't sit here and say it's a top 15 D. So my hope, I mean, let's face it though. If the Raiders have a top 15 defense and their offense is just as good as what it was last year, that's a playoff team. Because there were three times last season that the Raiders blew a lead with less than a minute 47 to go. So instead of being 8-8, eight eight, they could have easily been 11-5. and five. Let's go to Jason Bates, who might be a master. Uh, do you believe that the league knows we rely on Waller too much? How do you uh, rectify it? Wow, rectify and Bates in your last name. That's a lot going on there. I actually think one of the teams that exposed the Raiders a little bit last season were, were the New England Patriots, where they're like, all right, if we can take away Darren Waller, the Raiders are really going to struggle moving the football. And that's exactly what happens. In terms of, do, do the leagues know? Yes, but the league also knows that Derek Carr loves to hit his tight ends. I mean, we had Jared Cook. Now you have Darren Waller. The hope is that a guy like Ruggs, Edwards, they step up. They can take a little bit of pressure off of somebody like Waller, which is also going to open up a lot of other things for this Raiders offense. But, Jason, appreciate your question. Let's go to Tyler Durr. I'm sorry, Mitch, but we need a receiver help. We don't have a receiver that you could rely on getting open on third and long. Waller will get doubled. I don't actually necessarily agree with that. One of the receivers last season that was actually the best in terms of getting separated was Henry Ruggs. And I believe his separation was 2.71, which essentially means like the defender is 2.71 yards away from him at all times, which is one of the highest separation you know ratings in all the league. But I am hoping that the, those guys can take the next step. However, I agree with you. The Raiders don't have a wide receiver one. So random question here. Have y'all ever been to Nashville, Tennessee? Why for yes or N for no? Producer Sam is nodding his head. Yes, he has been. The reason why I am asking this question, I'm going to be there next weekend. So June 17th to the 20th, I'm going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. So if anybody lives anywhere near there and you want to get together, hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRens365, and I'm going to be at a bachelor party. So can't promise you I'm going to be in the perfect uh, state of mind. But if you do live in Nashville, I always try to meet up with fans in any kind of you know city, state that I go to. So here's my opportunity. It's going to be my first experience in Nashville, Tennessee. So if you want to hang out and grab a beer, at Mitchell Renz 365. Let's go to John Logsdon. How many sacks do you see our defense ending up getting individually? I think Max gets 10-plus and go Raiders. Love the show. All right, so defensive ends individually. I'm not going to go each player, and even though that's, I think, what you're asking. So last season, the Raiders had 21 sacks, which I believe was 29th ranked in the National Football League. But over the last three seasons, the Raiders ranked dead last in sacks because I, I think it was they had, was it 30, 32 sacks in 2019, only 13 sacks in 2018. Like, you're talking about bad numbers. So 
And the number that I'm going to go for is somewhere around 44 sacks, which is usually a little bit above league average. When you have a guy like Yannick, it's definitely going to help. Crosby in year three, Klee in year three, maybe number 99 helps a little bit as well. Malcolm Kuntz is also a good edge rusher. And you can say what you want about NASA, but if he's your fifth best edge rusher, that's actually a pretty good D-line. Untouchable Raider, 1960. Mitchell, people are bashing on Carr on his recent post where he is rocking out in the Golden Knights game because he is a San Jose Sharks fan thoughts. I don't care. And to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest hockey fan. If I had to root for a team, probably be the Islanders because that's my dad's team. But I know some people are ripping on Carr because he was a Sharks fan growing up. And But, I mean, his new city is Vegas. I mean, he's doing it more from a PR move, a PR standpoint. And, shit, if Vegas wanted to treat me and my family to a good time, the Knights, I'd be throwing on a Las Vegas Knights jersey as well. All right, we got Aaron. What up, my man? Should the Raiders sign Mitchell Schwartz? He's not healthy, and I'm going to go ahead and say no because he's a right tackle. And the fact that you drafted Alex Leatherwood, you want Leatherwood to be the starting RT. Now, if Schwartz wanted to be a backup, sure, but for what you're going to have to pay him, and if I was Schwartz, I wouldn't settle for backup money. So I'm going to go ahead and say no to that. Let's go to Walter Williams. Great last name. It's my middle name. Do you think we are interested in any other wide receivers? I don't. I, I don't see the Raiders going out and signing any more receivers. I think that they're pretty happy with the guys that they have because, again, they've already signed two guys in free agency, Snead and John Brown. They gave a raise to Zay Jones. They want Edwards and Ruggs to take a step forward, and they know what they have in Renfro as being a good slot player. If it's not a number one guy, I don't see the Raiders going out and doing it. 